Hello, hello, and welcome to the next step of the series of tutorials. Again, I want to thank all the patrons that make this series possible because it's sponsored by them and their support to make this series completely free. Just to bear in mind, when you create the guide process, these guide process notes should be used mostly or most some of them more on a per strand level than a per guide level. Things are the clump guides shouldn't be used on guides, uh, even if it has that name, only if you have a really, really a slice groom or an R direct groom that you should drive with a procedural clump your guides. Normally, if you want that kind of effect, you sculpt your guides on that way or give the effect via a processing. But you don't normally clump your guides because if you clump your guides, on a per guide level. So let's say that these are your guides and are clump on this way. And then you want to break them on a per strand level. It will be way more complex to break them on per strand level with any level of proceduralism because they're already baked into this shape. It's way easier to get these clumps on a per strand level and break them later. So bear in mind, that there are some specific cases where it's better to use one or the other. Now we're going to jump inside. And now that we saw how does the guide process works, we're going to jump into the guide brushes. The guide brushes have a different settings and they work on a different note. So let's start with plant guides. This will create a guide room and it has different settings. Once you see this, it has the same kind of structure, a primitive group for the initial setup. Uh, resampling, if you want to resample of, of an input average or uniformity, resample all affected curves if you want. Those are not normally set, but you can. Then if you use just the plan guides, that is the first one that we're going to review, it's just a basic brush that you can see here, shift and middle click or shift and click will change the radius and the moment that you click this you will see that we have a new guide here and it's going to be an average of the guides that already exist let me just reduce the amount of guides to maybe 10 and you will see that the effect doesn't apply anymore this is something that is really important the moment that you work with the guide groom note the guide room node has a recache option. If you change anything on the guides on top of the guide room on this kind of state, it was outside, so it's on top, you will have to recache strokes to load the information. So, which means try to not to use a guide process before the guide room. If you have to add a guide process, always add it after the guide room sometimes it's not possible and it's going to be really inconvenient because let's say that we have this groom of this length and then i add a guide process that increases the length of the groom and then i have a guide groom that is going to add this direction then i decide that i don't want to have this effect anymore and i want to change this line and to have shorter hair here once I want to try to see what's the effect and I show my guide groom, it's going to show this. Why? Because I need to recache again the strokes to see the new effect. So be aware of that. Once you have a guide process before the guide groom, you will have to recache your strokes. So now let's go back into this so you can create a new guide and it's going to have the points based on the average interpolation neighbors, not on the ones that you set here. So if I can put one, it's not going to follow or make anything because it's going on the average interpolating net neighbors, even if I turn that to off. So that's important to know. Default segments, actually it's not that default. Uh, default length, if we try to add a value without interpolating, it's not going to work. So we need to remove the interpolation if we want another type of value that is not interpolating between both. But once we have more than one curve, you can see that the length start to interpolate 
and we will have a nice and even curve out. So that's actually a useful option, but sometimes when you want to be outside of the boundaries of the interpolation, it's good to turn that off. We also have the ray bias segments, and this is going to cast rays if in case the curves or the CBs are inside of the skin. So if you have a really complex area, like something really like the snout or a mouth or something like that that has a lot of wrinkles and deformations, these will hide the other faces or it may be a really thin part like an ear and it's going to raycast so you can just select the area or the proper area, kind of back, back face calling kind of thing. We have fall off. That fall off will work from the center of the circle. So this is the brush. Fall off will be this. So it's kind of the radius. So if you increase it, it's going to be 100% on the center like this and it's going to decrease the effect towards the side. So you just move this thing. So it's 100% here and then decreases, decreases, decreases the effect. So that's basically how it works with the radius. And we have mirroring too. Mirroring will just be a basic mirror. And the moment that you want to affect, you can hit enter. Remember to activate the state, you go to the workspace, the viewport and hit enter. That will activate the state of the brushes. And you can see that it creates a mirror and we have different options of mirroring the tools and zero and one. So we have different areas of how we can mirror this. And that's basically how this tool works. This is just planting normal guides and basic deformations. I hope you like it and see you on the next one.